who um, is an alumni of this institution and a student of Detlef Gamal and a uh, very successful mathematician. Um, so she's going to present semi-local simply connectedness of non-collapsing Ritchie limit spaces. Okay. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Okay, so it's a really great pleasure to be come back here, especially. So I want to thank the organizer, especially Christina, for the arrangement. Yeah, as uh, Christina mentioned, actually I graduated here exactly 30 years ago, so it's really <laughs> a nice occasion, and uh, it's great to see the teachers, Mike and the brain, and uh, lots of bring lots of excellent memories. Especially, I'm not honored to give this uh, as a colloquium because I remember when I was a student here. The most thing I liked was attending the clogging. It was all very excellent, and I missed a lot. And I hope don't change that after my talk. <laughs> okay. So um, I apologize. The title is a bit uh, technical. I will explain. So this is joint, with, uh, joint work with Jia Yin Pan. He is uh, currently a postdoc at UCSB. And by the way, Santa Barbara and Stony Brook have the same initial. So I always feel the <laughs> uh, Okay, the paper is just posted on the archive. So let me uh, start explaining the title. <clears throat> First is what's the rich limit space. So this uh, has been uh, covered in the, a lot of the talks already. So the starting point of the uh, study of this subject probably is uh, Gromov's uh, pre-compactness, namely if you start with a sequence of manifold with the rich curvature, let's say, bounded from below, then a subsequence will converge. Uh, <coughs> so the, well, it's a, a subsequence. Converge to a limit space, x. So this, uh, uh, all, so Whenever you have rich curvature bound, then you always have lim limit. So this limit is referred to gromov hausdorff limit. And I will not define it here. It's uh, the, the usual for two metric space. This manifold automatically is a metric space. So you have the distance. You can put those in a big metric space and measure the hausdorff minimizing it. So in general, this x is just a metric space and a little bit better, maybe so-called length space. Or we would think it's namely the distance can be realized by a curve. The length of the curve is realized. And uh, uh, so this subject uh, has a, since so this is Gromov's. Called pre-compactness. And this, uh, it's used uh, in lots and lots of places, has many applications. Yeah, so especially uh, in, this, uh, in the work of, I started, um, I think, Mike and uh, uh, Chiga uh, coding neighbor later on, they developed a very rich theory about this space. In general, just mostly it's about geometry and the regularity of these rich limit spaces. OK, but I actually not going to use those results. Instead, my focus on the question is about what you can say about topology of this space. So for comparison, let's think about what if the manifold of sequence has sectional curvature lower bound. In that case, the limit space usually referred to is Alexander's <coughs> space. And again, this is a, a rich theory of Alexander space. So, and this space, yeah, it's also very well studied. One of the features about this space is that locally, the topology is still very nice. It's locally contractible. Okay. So local, yeah, there's no local non-trivial topology. So you can ask that. Is that true for rich limit space? And that's the answer in general. It's very uh, completely uh, the answer is no. 
Namely, even if, OK, so maybe I should add the non-collapsing condition. Non-collapsing usually means the sequence of the manifold, you have a uniform lower bound. Or just as a ball, I'm going to just, uh, uh, I guess I don't have to assume the diameter. So let me just say the ball of radius 1. Let's say xi is, has some lower bound, uniform lower bound. So that's, even if we add this assumption, the local topology could be, uh, as any small neighborhood of balls, the second bit number could be infinite. So it really, could be really bad in this case. So these are examples given by Mangue, built on examples of uh, Paraman only. It's 2000, I think. <coughs> Yeah. So even in the so non-collapsing limit, non-collapsing niche limit space, so I guess I'm not sure. Why I didn't officially. So those the limit space. These are called rich limit space. Just the grammar past off limit of sequence of manifold usually has a, a upper bound on the dimension, or usually the same dimension. Okay, so in the non-collapsing niche limit space, may uh, have infinite local topology. So for example, you can build up in arbitrarily small balls, the second bit number actually is infinite. Okay, so it's hard to imagine that's how bad it could uh, uh, felt in this. So this is much more uh, complicated than the Alexander space in this. But in that, okay, on the, uh, on the other hand, yeah, because of the examples, usually we know the sectional curvature controls like Gromov's bit number estimate, all the bit numbers, well, rich culture usually only controls the first bit numbers. So in that, maybe it's not, even though the example, it's not easy to construct. It's not true. So then you can ask, what about the first bit? What about the fundamental group of the limit, whether you can sell? So OK, in that case, uh, in the early joint with Christina here, uh, we were able, in a two papers, one and uh, or four in uh, we show that the limit space does have a universal cover actually so universal cover so rich does not have to be non collapsed any rich limit space okay uh, has universal cover. OK, so the key is here, the definition of universal cover is not the one usually in the Wikipedia or what you used to uh, in the sense. Because in the, I think if you look up uni uh, universal cover in the Wikipedia, it's said it's a simply connected cover or something. And this is uh, just a in the universal cover means it's cover of all cover in that sense, in the universal sense. It's uh, actually Spanish topology. He studied this in this uh, general sense. So uh, actually, before that, it's uh, lots of people we were studying these regularities. So rich, rich limit space, this is just for people knowing this RCD space. Rich limit space are also RCD space. So uh, Mandino and I, uh, maybe last year, also showed this is for RCD space. But it's the same. Uh, it, we showed the universal cover exists. And the problem here, as we said, this universal cover is we don't know. The key is that we don't know if the universal cover is simply connected. And this question has been buzzing me afterwards all these years. I'm trying to understand. So the question is, actually, uh, I'm going to just say, is x semi-locally simply connected? 
So that's the second part of the title. And that's the quick question I'm going to study today. <clears throat> OK, so what is, I think, this? Because we usually don't have to work. What does this exactly mean? This is the equivalent saying that universal cover exists, and it's simply connected. OK, well, that's, maybe that's not really definition. OK, but we can define this precisely. So define this is a similarly precise definition is for any point in your space x for matrix or any topological space, for any point you have a neighborhood, <coughs> neighborhood of x. such as that any loop in U is contractible in the whole space X. OK, so that's why it's called a, this uh, semi. If it's locally simply connected, usually you want, well, or small, you want the loop, it's contractible in the you itself, it's so you're allowed to in, go to a big space and the contractible, okay, and that's equivalent to this X is simply uh, the universal cover will exist and simply connect, okay. Since usually we really don't, you usually, we even though study lower regularity in this, usually we still don't have to work with the space. Maybe uh, I don't know. I don't know if you have you. Come up, think about space that universal cover not exist. Usually, we always exist. So, just assure we're not stating, we're not asking a, a question which has an empty set. I show you an example. <coughs> so first, uh, this so canonical way is called the Hawaii rain does not have a universal cover. Okay, so which is Hawaii rain? Let's go in the smaller and the smaller, and arbitrarily smaller in this case. OK, I guess that's clear. It does not have a universal cover. So I guess our theorem, it does need to work to show something has a universal cover, I guess. So this, then I think, what is a space which has a universal cover, but it's not simply connected, I guess. OK, so then that's justify this question is, if we take a Hawaii rain and uh, uh, take the suspension, like the comb of this, on, on each part of the circle, on each part of the circle, so this become uh, contractible, actually. All of them can be. Now, if I take another part, put together, Similarly, exactly, or just for illustration, I'm going to make the cone on this other side, but it's, it's OK. You can also. So the metric I put is the length metric. We are interested in length metric. So this now uh, means anything like from here, go to here. I have to either go to the t this side and come back, or I have to go to the top to come back. That's the distance. It's not the usual. Uh, the distance from I n. So this space, I claim, it uh, uh, has a universal cover itself, but it's not simply connected. <clears throat> OK, well, all the loops, anything you can loops, any loops, I can take any loops here, you can go up and shrink and go get more and more. So if the universal cover exists, it has to be itself. You can, OK, so arbitrary loop. But there is a loop which is non-trivial. If, if we take a loop one side here and go next side, then go to this side and go this side, and keep going infinitely many. And that loop is not OK. So this loop, if I want to contract, I go to the top and bottom, I contract to here. And the next one in order to contract, I have to go here, go to the bottom here, and this, and the next. So really, if, the loop, if the, you're trying to, yeah, the, the function you're going to get is like this. So in the end, it's not continuous. The homotopy you can construct is not continuous. So therefore, this actually, that loop is non-trivial. 
Okay, so the fundamental group here is quite big, actually. Even though all the loops in this critical is all this kind of space, the loop can be actually homotopy to arbitrary small neighborhood. But that homotopy cannot, if you go to the point, you cannot map to a point continuously. Okay, so that's the, you have to, yeah, go up and down, go up and down in this case. Okay, so uh, we want to uh, rule out this kind of space uh, thing. So this question, so today is, the answer is, the question is, that answer is uh, uh, what? Simple, simple statement is, so, uh, today I want to say, one of the answer to that question is yes, if it's non-collapsing. Okay, so if it's non-collapsing, then the, the space itself is semi-locally semi -locally simply connected. Namely, the universal cover is simply connected. Okay, so the proof of this, we don't use this uh, assumption here. We're just uh, going to construct it by hand, actually. So to state the result more precisely, I'm going to introduce some uh, notions so I can state more precisely. Actually, what we proved uh, is a bit more than this. So to, I'm going to introduce, so uh, this is, I think it's also studied, called it's like a one connected radius, or we'll say called a modular of one connected, one contractibility. In geometry, actually, yeah, I'm going to mention in this, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, Grof Peterson's work, they studied the contract radius. And here, we only interested in the loop, so I put a one here. Okay, so what is that? Is, is we take in for any t greater than zero and x. So this is make, for any metric space, that's all need to make sense. Then what we're going to define this radius is t depends on is so one the modulo is equal to uh, infimo. I'm going to sometimes I never realized of uh, for uh, in this kind of sometimes it could be infinite and uh, uh, c or rho. I think I didn't know it's a rho. <coughs> Okay, so infinity of all the row big or equal t, such as that any loop in the in the ball center at x with the radius t is actually contractible. In the ball of x row. Okay. All right. Okay. So maybe that's a uh, tactical, but actually notice that these uh, conditions really relate to the concept we want to use. Namely, if you have a space, if you for any point in the space uh, exists uh, some t, let's say t depends on x, which is finite such as that, the so row of Tx of uh, x is finite. If for any point you can find some times this is finite, then actually x is semi-locally simply connected. That's why I want to introduce uh, this, this uh, like a quantified version of semi-locally simply So how far you need to go for a ball in your loop here, how far you need to go out such that it become contractible. So go out, the row is uh, the infimo which you require to go out. So if this is finite for any x, then yes, it's sem semi-locally simply connected. Actually, uh, uh, what about simply connected? If for this, actually, you have some ti going to zero, and 
rho of uh, ti and x equal to ti, then x is locally simply connected. So this is the row actually equal to ti if sign for sign. Then actually, yeah, this is locally simple. So this, uh, uh, the question we want to study is really, really to this, the quantity we introduce, the so row tx a lot. Okay. So now I can state the result precisely. <coughs> Any questions? Okay, so our main result, this is again joined to its part, is if uh, uh, actually our result is local, so we don't have to assume the assumption on the whole space. So this is, uh, uh, so yeah, okay, I just saying we have a sequence manifold converged to a limited space. I'm going to assume, so uh, here I don't assume, we don't assume this is uh, complete. So the first assumption is this 2 is uh, actually, 2 is a radius. It's just uh, if it may not have, it's always uh, equal to empty. So if it has boundary, then I don't want to touch the boundary. Or you can just assume this has no boundary in this case. Because I'm stating a local result. And also, I'm going to assume this ball of radius 2 is compact. So any complete space, we know, all satisfy that. So I'm going to just, uh, my assumption is going to be just on this ball here. So we assume the rich culture is have the lower bound on the ball. And the balling is of radius one, we said has a lower bound. In this case, so this is all the assumptions. <clears throat> so basically I don't care what the manifold look are like outside the ball of radius 2. Of course, 2 is just a subnumber we choose. It's not really important. So it's just uh, you make assumption of the local part in this case, uh, non-collapsing. Then the conclusion is we can make uh, the, uh, the limit of Tx with T, T going to 0. We can show this actually equal to 1 for all x in a smaller size of the ball. <coughs> Uh, for all x. Okay, so if you, we make assumption basically on uh, all of the sequence <coughs> of manifold on radius of 2, then collapsing with the rich curvature bound, then for all the points in the limit here with a, si a smaller size, basically, one is also, this actually equal to 1. So of course, that's basically saying this guy actually not only semi-locally simply connected, but almost like a locally simply connected. Only you, it's not exactly equal to Ti, but you know, any close, it's just T plus any epsilon <coughs> you want. So it's, you can visualize, essentially, it looks like a locally simply connected, right, with just addition of thing. OK, is the statement clear? OK, so that's a precise uh, the statement. OK, so in order to prove this, of course, so that is the whole thing. The key estimate, actually, I'm going to focus on this is <clears throat> I'm going to show that this limit of Tx when T go into 0. Note, I, I forgot to say, this function actually defined may not be continuous in T, but that's it. So we're going to take the limit and show this is equal to 0. Okay, so first, it's there's two big part, but this is the main part. If I show this equal to zero, of course, I have semi-locally simply connected already, right? Okay, 
So to bootstrap from here, then basically almost like t, uh, that part we use the fact that the tangent cone is a metric cone and the summonase is a uniform catalog, essentially localized and uh, this, so it's not. But the key part is this one. Show that this equal to zero, actually. Okay. <coughs> okay, so let's see how do we prove this. So, uh, what we would think about, actually this, yeah, for a long time, I just feel this should be done all long time ago, but you know, from time to time, I tried to always fail. Okay, so what are the, the general ways one would you would like to prove something like this? Well, one thing is maybe, so let's think about for sectional curvature how one proved it actually. For actually for Alexander space. We said it's locally contractible. Actually, how that is done is, in this case, for any point in the Alexander space, if you blow up, the tangent cone is unique and it's a metric cone. So if you open up like manifold, the tension, it's just the RM. In here, so the all tangent cone. Ah, metric cone. Metric cone here means really uh, a topology, the space is an uh, interval from 0 times R, 0 times with a cross section, let's say, and you uh, really you just identify all the m at the zero to one point and put a metric Euclidean metric using cosine law to put on. So therefore, of course, all the metric cone are contractible in this case. So let's go back to the uh, I think Brago Gromov or uh, Perelman. They proved this, and another key result. So these two step, the second step is Perelman showed that at every point in a neighborhood, actually it's homeomorphic to the point in the tangent cone, locally. It's homeomorphic. To tangent cone. So that's is a famous paramount. Stability result. That spell does not look like. Okay, so yeah, so from here we know the metric cone are uh, contractible and locally it looks like the tangent cone, that's then it's locally contractible. Okay, so if we try to follow this, at least in this case, this is non collapsing weak. Actually, first part is also true. Uh, so now for the rich case, rich limit, rich non collapsing limit. Non collapsing. So, first one, yeah, actually, yes. It's, well, not exactly. Uh, here, as cones are unique. Actually, tangent and cone may not be unique, but they all look like a metric cone still. So, this is a Chiga coding. <clears throat> this case, so at least. But the second part cannot be true. <coughs> uh, just as we said, this uh, example by Mangui, we locally could even, the second bidding number is, could be infinite, right? And this uh, uh, metric cone, it's not, it's all contractible. So, it's, uh, so that's impossible to, there's no theme. There's this, uh, what is missing connecting from the tangent cone to the space. Even if you, I actually tried a while, try to do just, or maybe just in the fundamental group level, you know, not, even that it's actually hard. 
because you know, we even don't know the tangent and cone is unique. You might have different tangent and cones and how you connect this part to a different sequence blow up, the limit is different. Okay. So it's just a no natural connection between the local topology and the tangent and cone, even though the tangent and cone are really nice. So that's one way to thinking about doing it. Another way to get uh, locally contractible for, <laughs> well, since we have in this non-collapsing assumption for sectional curvature, there is another way to do it. It's you go from the sequence. So this, you can think about this is like an intrinsic approach. Just look at the limit space structure, limit space, trying to do it. Another way is you're trying to use a sequence. And that's in uh, really in this. Uh, when the Grof Peterson proved their famous finiteness theorem. <coughs> I think it's 88. Uh, namely, for sectional curvature, have lower bound, and the volume has a, a lower bound, uniform, and diameter, upper bound. For this uh, sequence of manifold with uh, this uh, condition, they proved uh, that uh, this contractibility radius is uniformly from, bonded from below. Namely, uh, this low, there you can have a uniform constant estimate, such as that small ball are contractible in a bigger ball. <coughs> so first part is there is a constant Such is that BP of R is contractible. In BP of CR for all for all I belong to zero and epsilon and all P in the manifold. So this is uniform. It does not depend on the manifold. For all these sequence, these constants are uniform. Once you have this kind of uniform estimate on the manifold, then you can try to pass to the sequence, pass to the limit. <coughs> OK, so this pa the idea of this pass to the limit, actually, I learned from Peter's paper, but really uh, go back to Bosako topology in 1953 already in this. He kind of already yeah, introduced this kind of uh, this radius we said, the, the, which is one you can, but they all just do the contractible. It's just to say how larger your ball is needed, go to the big ball. How big you need a small ball is contractible in the big ball. Okay. Once you have this uniform estimate, well, of course, at that time, it does not have the Gromov Hausdorff limit in this stuff. So Peter put this into the sequence, and you can show that it does pass to the limit. Okay. So this is using sequence and this. Okay, so for this, to, for this approach, um, at the beginning, actually, I look at this, it looks quite hopeful, because in our case, we don't look for contractible. We only look for loops to be contractible, right? Remember, the uh, rich curvature usually controls the fundamental group quite good. So we would expect, especially actually for this sequence, uh, if I re replace now, so we replace the uh, uh, sectional curvature by rich curvature. <coughs> So now I replace the sectional curvature by rich curvature. So for this class, actually, uh, Mike, uh, 
Anderson, actually, that's exactly when I was a student here. Mike approved this result. It's published in 1990, but uh, I think I was studying this paper. He proved that this class, the fundamental, how many, what is this? There's a finite. So, so this class, let me call them star. Actually, star has only finitely many. Isomorphism types. Uh, for the fundamental group. Actually, and I use this actually in one of uh, results in my CC2 already. So this is, so we, we would, uh, one would think then we should for this class at least have the Let's say instead of contractible, maybe all the loop is contract. We would also have a uniform estimate. Say it's a small ball. All the loop in a small ball is contractible in a big ball. Okay, that's one would ex uh, expect. But actually, this is not true. So in this approach, actually, two is true. This part because it's a metric space, but first one is not true. <laughs> okay, so it's always something is not right. So this one. Actually, call it the not true. Even for one uh, contractible radius. Okay. Uh, okay. So this example is actually uh, in the construction of my. He already have some examples, and O2 also has examples. Uh, so this his paper actually explicitly mentioned that, for example, you can take S3 cross with RP, uh, RP2, for example, and you put a sequence of metric. So this uh, fundamental group is pi2. Right? You, you can put a metric such that rich curvature is greater or equal to actually some positive number. And uh, converge to suspension of uh, spherical suspension of uh, uh, S2 times RP2. Anyway, if, so it's, it's non collapsing. Still, everything is five dimensional. So it's this suspension, spherical suspension is five dimensional. Suspension make it simply connected. Okay. So this uh, fundamental group still can jump. Basically, since it's a finite type, you might think, oh, maybe it's stable, then that will be good, right, to control. But uh, it cannot. So one cannot. So this has a smaller and a smaller loops, and those are never contractible. Okay. So therefore, the corresponding part for one cannot be true, actually. Okay. So that also fails. Uh, but two is okay. Uh, Actually, uh, namely, if you assume have some uniform bond on the sequence, it does pass to the limit. Okay, so uh, now, okay, let me start on the idea of the proof. Oh gosh. Uh, okay, so so that's I hope you indicate. It sounds very naive question. It has some difficulties. So the naive approaches you can, doesn't work. So that's why it takes so long. So idea. OK, so maybe this, I actually, I can divide into three results. Uh, first part is what I said. It's basically, if you assume this uniformly true, then it, the, it does pass to the limit. So essentially, in this uh, Bosakis uh, uh, theorem, but we kind of proved a much more simpler. So this is a purely metric space mm. for any x i complete, uh, for example, complete length metric space. So if x i p i converges to xp, so this, and assume this t of x for all the x has upper bound, namely, 
And we want, it's very important, so, so this function is continuous. Lambda is, this is continuous in general. If you all is bounded from above and zero equal to zero, this is very important. Uh, if this is true for all x, so actually, as I said, all the result is local, so you really need only assume on the ball of two for complete, but I'll just write the complete version. In this case, then it does pass to the limit. Namely, the row t of x is also bounded by lambda t. Exactly the same lambda, okay? We have no losing for all x in the limit. Okay, all right. So that's uh, somewhat conceivable, but on the other hand, the problem is we don't have that assumption. This is not true, right, in the, for the sequence. We cannot accept it. But if you does, so this is... Uh, uh, we're going to divide the point into three types in the limit space, and this is the first type, so that's good. So it's already okay. Okay. So second. Uh, so well, or another question we can ask is: So how do we make sure it does have that bond? So we said in general it's not true, uh, as this example shows, but. One thing, the start point we have some hope is when the volume is big, it does true. It's not, we don't assume just a, so the second result. And this is a, only the part we use a lot. It the, uses a geometry assumption in this case. So given this, if, for, uh, let me see, if, again, I, I just assume complete for, for quicker. Assumption. If this manifold is has rich low bond, say K, and volume is of the ball, it's big or equal to uh, omega times the volume of the corresponding ball in the model space. Actually, the model space, how do I write? Negative k, just one, is that OK? This is one, yeah, because model space, I don't have to write as a point. It's all symmetric, OK? So basically, this is model space with curvature negative k, OK? And I assume omega is strictly bigger than half. So this volume is not just non-collapsing, but quite big in this case. Actually, using this, you can sh quickly show that this space has to be, uh, the ball has to be simply connected. In this case, we can show that, um, okay, I should say exists a sine epsilon, which depends on n k omega, and c is also n k omega. So basically what they have, it's true, then any loop. P of R is contractible. And VP of CR. For all R between 0 and epsilon. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, I'm looking just as a point P in this case. Actually, we can. OK, so this is the. At least, okay, in this maybe, when the volume is very big, well, kind of relatively big, it's a trivial in the, that you can show this is simply kinetic. But now we can get actually a uniform control on how large it has to go out to be simply connected, okay? So when the volume is big, then this is true. Uh, so in order to now to write, I have to define these three types of the, to state the whole thing. So the final strategy is we're going to use induction on this volume. So when it's bigger than half, actually, now we do have this, right? So you have uniform bond, and by theorem 1, it passed to the limit. So type 1 is this we call then type 1. So this is OK. So now, uh, in order to, 
really to tell the strategy, I would like to define this, uh, uh, define the point in the limit space to three types, basically. And we, uh, this is kind of the type two. Okay. So uh, the proof of this is using, I will indicate how time come back. So now for, for any point in the limit space, we're going to divide into, so we, okay, so that's, we use a sequence a lot. And this definition will show that it's independent of the sequence. So we really, uh, this is a manifold and a convergent to this. So we're going to divide into three types. <clears throat> First type is, X is type one. We said if I have some R such as that, the sequence, this family, of the row and TZ. Now notice that I need for all Z, for all Z in the ball or for uh, Xi to the R. We want all of these is equal continuous. At T equal to zero. Okay, so we can show a simple lemma showing equal continuous, because load t equal to zero is always zero. If equal continuous at t equal to zero, then we can find a continuous function like that. It's upper bound by lambda t. So that's like in the first result. So this is, so second one is, so by the first result, actually, uh, this point are always, uh, the row is always equal to zero. So we want to show this is, okay. So from theorem A, anyway, okay, so let me see. Let me finish. X is type two. If row T of A I is not equal continuous. At T equals zero. Okay, so sounds like type three is the rest. Okay, I'm not sure if you see there is anything rest, but there is, okay. Notice when I define the type one, I want all the, all the point, not just the point at xi, but all the point in a uniform size ball to be all equal continuous. And this is just not continuous, just at the point xi. So what is the type three is actually these are equal continuous at the point xi, but not in a uniform way. And that's the type three. And type three is the most difficult one I have to handle. Okay, so type one, I hope from the first result, this is good, right? So we already have, because they are all equal times, it passed to the limit. So we have, this is, uh, uh, so, so type one of rho t x when t going to zero is equal to zero. So that's we already done, okay. So the type two actually uh, the proof is very much is in the proof over here. So maybe I still have a little bit time to indicate the proof. And it's using this Mike's result. When he proved this finite theorem, he also showed that. So we said we have to control those small loops. That's the problem, the small non-trivial loops. But the small non-trivial loops, Mike actually showed that there's a uniform bond on how many of them. So in order to control the type two, uh, what we do all in the induction is, you take the ball of Bxi, let's say, two here, and this converges to B, uh, I think, or maybe we should take the smaller, the size. And here, and we can show that all these smaller the non-trivial loops here, okay? If I take a, a smaller and a smaller, okay, so or let me take the, uh, let's say we have a smaller and a smaller loops, ci, which are in b, x, i, t, i, and t, i actually go to zero, very, very small loops. And these loops generate a group gamma i, let's say. 
And Mike showed that this, OK, well, we're going to see it's non-trivial, but this number is uniformly bounded from M V D. It's not too big. This, it's a finite many. So I take the cover of, uh, I think maybe I'll use R of Y. Uh, I just use UI, how about UI bar? Is it take as a cover, but the group of the cover is exactly this group. So we use the local cover, basically, the pore of the local cover. And it's equivalence convergent to a I. U i, oh, not u, u of a group G. So I think Fukaya and Fukai, they introduce the equivalent convergence. And this has a commute diagram in this case. Well, the key is that, so this one, if you, these are very small loops. In this case, then uh, the balling here is because of the, if this is big, then the balling of the ball should be also big here. But they, are, they cannot move too far away, so it's almost the same. So the volume of the ball, so in this case, so the volume of the ball here, uh, same size ball, usually should be double of this ball here, OK? And once we have that, well, OK, when this omega is bigger than half, we know it's all good. It's contractible. So the final work of this is induction. Induction on omega. Omega is, uh, I'm going to. Omega x, I'm going to define as the limit of the volume of the ball of x r to the uh, Hausdorff. Well, actually, yeah, Hausdorff measure of the limit to the volume of of the ball of the model space. I put a negative one and r going to zero. So this is always between zero and one. If it's one, it's a regular point. It's already good. OK. So I'm going to start. The final is the induction step is on omega. So if omega is bigger than half, then we have uniform bond. And it's going to be past limit. It's good. So start with omega bigger than half. Then I say, what about omega is bigger than 1 fourth? <coughs> In this case, I'm going to have type 1. Or type 1 is all good, it's already. If it's a type 2, I go to the cover, then in the cover, the volume is going to be big. This is going to be half. Okay. The problem is, what about type 3? And that is the main trouble. Uh, so for type 3, I need another result. And this result actually does not depend on this. Basically saying, if, if this is true or for all type 2, then it's also true for type 3. <coughs> Is it's uh, uh, if the limit of rho x t t going to zero holds for all type two, then then the same statement also for type three. Okay, and this is the most technical part of the proof actually. So I will not able to. And the last whole thing. He said he has many constant, right? And I have I don't have the, all this color to indicate. I have like four parameters of constant to adjust to make sure to, I, we need to construct this home topy part of from the sequence part of the limit and make the size control so that the home topy we construct is continuous. So it, it's a very delicate uh, part here. Okay, if I have this part, so I go to the uh, the induction step, I go to the top. The top, the volume is greater than, uh, going to be greater than half, then this is assumed it's all done in this case. So basically, in this induction, yeah. And we, our volume is bigger than omega, some omega. So after some time, it will cover all the point, and the induction will stop in this case. OK. So that finishes the proof. And finally, once we proved that this is uh, uh, simply connected, then those results about manifold with rich bond and uh, uh, volume lower bond also can pass to the limit, in particular like Mike's finite result now holds for the rich limit space too in the non-collapsing. Yeah. OK, I think I should stop here. Any questions? Of course.
theorem B, yeah. the Yes. So, right. But actually, I can estimate if I want uh, explicitly. Uh, not to quite. Yeah. I. So the actually the B is in here. Okay. Oh, okay. One step in the. It's also some. Yeah. I go to a sequence. But then the contradiction, this, uh, it's the volume. One side is a big than half. The other one is less than. If I want, I can compute the volume explicitly to find out exactly how much. But we didn't do it. <laughs> OK, right. But you're right. We take a country sequence. But I can see what will make the contradiction. The contradiction is very explicit. Yes. Yes. What is your feeling in the collapsing case? Do you think the? Uh, yeah, so this proof really does not uh, give any hope, but I just feel it still should be true, but uh, I don't know how to. Or even just the RCD space, let's see. Yeah, it sounds, but you need more. Hopefully, so this proof is too much depends on sequence. If there is some more ni nice uh, result, nice structure result. But I don't think, yeah, even the tangent cone is a metric cone. It does not. So I don't know how to yeah, get. Even though I said there's tons of regularities. But just one point, like Hawaii rain could mess the whole thing up. Hawaii rain, everything is good except one point. Yeah. So even one single point is. And so far, all the result is at the regular point, at, at the good point. Yeah. So you really need some result on the single point. And usually, you want. Most of it is using sequence to pass to the limit, right? So, I, yeah, that's a very good question I would like to. So that's the next question I have to maybe, I hope don't have to wait 20 years. <laughs> Any more questions? 